What's up everybody, it's your boy Nate and today we're going to be talking about how to make some super cool retro film looks using Adobe After Effects. That's right, everything that you're going to learn is just using the built-in effects in After Effects. Now this effect is super useful, I've seen it used time and time again. Shoot, even here on the channel, Chriselle and I have made so many videos that have implemented this retro look and I know a lot of you have been asking on Instagram, just DMing like, Nate, can you please, please show us how you make footage that that looks like it was shot in the 2020s, look like it came out in 1960, or was shot on some sort of old school film camera with all that nice distortion and scan lines and blooming glow effects. So that's exactly what we're gonna be doing today. I'm super excited, I know you are too. All right, let's go. So today we're going to be hopping into After Effects using a really cool color grading and VFX technique to make footage look super retro and like it was shot on some sort of old school film camera. It's also not going to be a super long video if you check down below. We're going to learn this effect in under 30 minutes. By the end of this video, you're going to be able to make all sorts of super cool effects. We're going to hop right in and I'm going to show you how to do this in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. All right, let's go. Okay, so the first thing to do is let's open up After Effects. So I'm gonna go down here and pull that up and bam, as you can see, I'm in After Effects. I wanna show you guys a quick preview of what the final outcome is gonna look like. Let me go ahead and hit play on this. So as you guys are gonna to start to notice here, we have all these really cool details going on with this footage. Not only do we have these really nice, noisy and grainy effects going on, we also have this dust and particles getting randomly shifted about. We even have the VHS distortion with the play lines in there as well as some really nice glow and blooming effects. So I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's just start from scratch and I'm gonna go ahead and make a brand new project. Bam, we have a brand new project. This is what it's gonna look like when you first open up After Effects. The very first step once you're here is to actually grab the footage that you wanna color grade and add all of these super cool effects to. You guys can use whatever footage you like, whether that's something that you shot at home, something that a friend gave you, or if you're like me, I'm gonna be using something from Envato Elements because they have a whole bunch of really cool assets and videos and a lot of fun stuff, which if you guys are also interested in doing that, we're gonna be having a discount code Okay, so right here I have the original footage. What you guys might even notice off the bat is that this hazmat suit is actually yellow colored. So I'm gonna be showing you how to change the color selectively as well here. So cool, we got this super cool uh, hazmat suit. This person's wearing this gas mask. Looks super old school, maybe even Soviet era, like one of those radioactive scary movie scenes. Okay, cool. So once we have this clip, the first step is to drag this into After Effects. Now you can import it however you want, but my favorite way is to just drag and drop it in because it seems to be the simplest. Bam, once that is imported, the next thing to do is just go ahead and make a new composition. To make a new composition, I'm gonna click and drag on this clip, and then I'm gonna drag it all the way down to this little icon, which is gonna be the make a new composition icon. What that does is it makes a brand new composition with the exact same settings of that footage layer, which is normally what I wanna do when I'm color grading. I don't wanna use an edited down video clip. I wanna use the exact original OG footage for it. Now let's scrub through and we can see we have everything in there. So that's looking nice. Okay, cool. So once we have that in there, the way I wanna set this up is so that it is procedural, meaning that we can change this footage at any time and still have all these really cool effects going on. So to do that, I'm gonna create a brand new layer and it's gonna be an adjustment layer. If you've never used adjustment layers, pretty much the way that it works is anything that gets applied to it, any effect will be applied also to the layers down below it. So in this case, if the adjustment layer is above our original footage, we can just make effects on the adjustment layer and then they'll start to get applied to the layer below it. And I'm gonna show you exactly what that means right now. So the very first effect that I wanna add to this is a transition effect, which you can find by right clicking on the layer, then going all the way up to effect and then go down to transition and select Venetian blinds. 
This one is one of my favorites for making all sorts of cool scan lines are reminiscent of old school televisions and the way that they used to process the images. So the way that we're going to do this is by turning up the transition completeness ever so slightly to about 20%. That's looking pretty good. And then we're going to change the direction of it so it's not just vertical lines. We want them horizontally. And to do that, we can change the direction to 90 degrees. Okay, cool, so that's looking pretty nice. Now, they're exactly these really harsh black lines, and what instead we want it to do is look like these different strips of the image are getting projected on. And so we're gonna feather out the edges by just increasing this feather radius by about, let's see, I think 10 is looking pretty nice. So you get this nice fuzzy lines in between the image. That's looking really, really good, especially in the dark areas where all of it kind of comes together, and then the light areas, you can really see the effect happen a lot more. That's exactly what we wanted. Now, if I turn off this, adjustment layer down here, you're going to see that all of a sudden the effect does not get applied to the footage below. And that's pretty much just how adjustment layers work. To make our lives also easier, we want to rename this adjustment layer from adjustment layer one to something like color correction or CC for short. That way I can remember exactly where all the color adjustments are being applied. Okay, cool. So the next effect now is we're going to start to add in a tint to this, which you can find under effect and then under color correction, tint. That's going to make the image black and white by default. But what I want to instead do is change the map black from black to red by clicking on this button here and then clicking OK. Then we're going to click down over on map white to white and instead change it over to something like green. And what you're going to get is a super funky image that looks like it's probably going to hurt your eyes right now. And the reason for that is because these two colors are vibrating colors. So naturally, whenever we see these uh, very polar opposite colors next to each other, it's it's pretty difficult to read and not legible. But this is going to come in super handy for making this kind of disturbing radioactive effect in a bit. Now, instead of making this the entire image, we want it instead to just apply very, very subtly to the lights and the darks of the image. I'm going to change it from 100% tint to about, let's keep it at about just 5%. It's really, really subtle. And all of a sudden we get this really nice cross processed look. Now, if I turn it off, you can see all of a sudden we get this really clean looking uh, image. And if we turn it on, it's slightly a little bit more distorted and it's a little bit difficult for people to process exactly what's going on here. Now, again, these values are completely arbitrary, meaning that you can make them whatever you want. If you want it at 5% or if you want it at 100% because you want your image looking like a disturbing thing, hey, that, that's all up to you and your artistic decisions. So just make sure that you're having fun with it. There's no right or wrong answers when it comes to messing around with your footage here. Now, I'm noticing also we've gone through this project a little bit without clicking save. So let's go ahead and save this out really quick so we don't lose any work. I'm just gonna call this retro film looks tutorial. Okay, cool, so that's looking good. Next thing that we're gonna apply to this is a curves effect, which you can find by right clicking, going to effect, color correction, then curves. This effect is an effect that I've talked about time and time again. I don't think there's any project that I've done in After Effects that does not at least get a curves applied to it at least once. It's one of the most powerful color correction and just image changing tools, I think, inside of After Effects. One, for its simplicity, and then two, for the amount of range that you can use it in combination with other effects. So the first thing that I want to do to this image is increase the brightness because it's looking pretty dim. So I'm going to click on this line here and it's gonna make a brand new point. And whenever I drag up my mouse, you're gonna see that all of a sudden we're getting this nice clean arc upwards. And that's making the mids and the highlights a little bit brighter in the image. So that's exactly what we want right now. That's looking good. And if I wanna add a bit more contrast, I can go down to the this area of this graph here. And if we bring this down, it's gonna lower down the blacks and the mids a little bit more. And that's dimming those down a bit, which is adding a little bit more contrast since the highlights are getting bumped up. That's looking pretty good right there. Okay, cool. And the last thing that I'm going to apply to the CC layer for now is an effect called CC vignette, which if you've never heard of a vignette before, all it is is a darkening around the edges of an image. Typically, you would have seen this in older cameras because their sensor sizes didn't naturally match up to the, the size of the lenses. And so you'd pretty much be cropping out a circle from a square image and the light entering on the sides would become way more dimmer. And that's kind of where the vignette effect came from. And hey, if we want our image to look a little bit more retro and old school, why not add that effect as well? So to do this, I'm going to actually speed it up and I'm going to be using a plugin called FX Console. It's a plugin that I talked about time and time again. 
and it's also in the top 10 best plugins for After Effects. Not only that, it's also free, so if you haven't gotten it before, make sure you snag it. And that's gonna let me just have this pop up here to where I can type in CC Vignette and not have to go all the way to the drop downs of effect. And then I don't even know where it's located, somewhere in here. Uh, stylize? All the way in effect, stylize, and then CC Vignette. You see how difficult that is just to even like remember exactly where everything is in the menu system. So that's why I like using FX console. A little quick tip for you guys. Now the default settings look kind of decent to me, but you can also mess around with the amount and the angle of view. I'm actually going to lower it down a little bit because I don't want it to be too, too dim. All right. I think around 10 looks like a pretty good value to me. All right. And that is all set looking good. I'm just going to quickly toggle on and off this visibility layer and instantly you can kind of see how this effect it's starting to come together. <laughs> so the next thing that I want to do to this image is add in a really cool VHS distortion effect. The way I like to do this is by actually using a VHS asset so that it's grounded in the real world and I'm not just making up some random VHS looks and random noise and instead actually using something that's taken from a film strip or taken from a VHS player just playing out a noisy image. So I could go through the archives and try and find it or the super easy way is going to Envato Elements and just picking up an asset there which is what I got here for this tracking overlay. Now if you guys are on a budget or don't want to spend any money at all I'm pretty sure that YouTube also has just random VHS assets, which you guys can download. Well, I mean, I don't know if you guys can download it legally, but you know, you guys can, you guys can make your best judgment on how to get some VHS assets and, uh, and that way you can use it for your, your videos. So this is what I have right here. I'm going to play it really quick for you guys so you can see what it looks like. Ooh, I'm going to turn off the audio. It sounds really bad. <laughs> Yep, and that is it. It's just a black image with a little bit of specs going on it from the VHS film. And we even have the nice play text, just super old school. Holy yeah. Okay, cool. So this looks like it's going to work perfectly for us. I'm going to go ahead and drag this into the project here. But this time around, I'm going to drag it into the timeline. So it's just popped right in there already. Now, normally this would bother me that it's not the same exact size of the footage, but what we're going to do, it's not actually going to matter in terms of the effect that we're doing. So what we're going to want to do first is pre-compose this, and I'm just going to call this VHS distortion and just hit OK. Make sure leave attributes are all in there. And then I'm going to turn off the layers visibility by clicking on this eyeball icon right here. Next thing that we're going to do is create a brand new adjustment layer by right clicking in the timeline and then going to new adjustment layer and this layer I'm going to rename it and call it distortion. Now the way that this adjustment layer is going to work is I want it to use the VHS image to distort the images that it gets below it. And the way that we're going to do that is by adding a brand new effect to it which is a displacement map effect. Now I'm just going to assume if you don't already have FX console installed, the effect is found under distort and then displacement map. Yep, right there. So on the effects controls for the displacement map, we're going to change it from distortion, which is just the default first layer to the VHS distortion that we just created. And you're not going to see too much happen. I don't think right away until we change this horizontal and vertical displacement from red and green channels to the luminance channels because this is mainly a black and white image. We're not having uh, different reds and, and greens going on. We want just the lightness of the image to cause the distortion that we're going to be seeing. Now I'm going to crank up these values a bit and you're going to see all of a sudden we're getting this image get distorted to the right or to the left depending on how much I'm changing this max horizontal displacement. So I'm actually going to want to change it to something like not to be too much because then the image is just going to be going all over the place. So I'm just going to change it to something like 26 or 25. And then I'm going to change the vertical displacement to something like 25 as well. Maybe even 26 just to give it some variance. And then I want to change the center map or displacement map behavior to stretch map to fit. So you guys can change these values depending on what you see looks nice for your effect. Okay, cool. So this is looking pretty good. The next thing that we want to do is pre-compose our original footage. And I'm going to rename it to OG footage. Make sure that I leave all the attributes and click OK. 
So the reason why we pre-compose that footage is because we're gonna be adding in another effect and this one is gonna be dependent on the footage below it, but we want this effect to still be procedural and us to be able to change the footage at any time. So the way that we're gonna do this is actually by duplicating this pre-composition called OG footage. I'm just gonna press Control D while I have it highlighted twice. So let's press Control D one more time. That way that we have three layers and if I click into any one of these layers, it's always gonna have that original footage. And if I make any changes to the original layers, it's also gonna happen to these pre-compositions. So let's go ahead and solo these layers so I can view them without any VFX that we just added. So for this next effect, I wanna mimic the red and blue channel displacement from an LED screen. The way that we're gonna do this is I'm gonna take this first layer or the one that's highest above all the other OG footage layers. And I wanna go ahead and rename this to blue and this is going to be our blue channel. And the first effect that I want to add to this layer is a channel invert effect. Now by default, it's going to be an RGB invert, but instead we want to change this and click on this drop down and select on blue. That way we're inverting the blue channels on this image. The next thing I'm going to do is add in a curves effect. And we want to crush down the blacks of the image. And the way that we're going to do this is by clicking down here and getting this line to around midway through this bottom of the second square here. Now, I also want the blues a bit more exposed. So I'm going to go into the channel drop down of this curves effect and go over to the blue channel. And I'm going to overexpose the blue channel so that they're in this upper fourth square here, which is about the starting of the third line. So that's looking pretty good. And the next thing I'm gonna do is go to the layer right below it, and I'm gonna go ahead and add in a channel invert effect as well. But this time you're gonna see that nothing happened to the image, and that's because we have this blue layer right above it. So I wanna turn off this blue layer by desoloing it. Bam, we get that image right below it. Now let's rename this layer from OG footage to red, because this is gonna be our red channel footage layer. So by default, this is also inverting the RGB channels. So let's change this now to inverting the red channels. We get this super funky image again. Now I know this part is looking really weird, but, but trust me, because this is all gonna come together really quickly. Okay, so the next thing that we wanna do is add in another curves effect to this red channel. Now let's crush the blacks in the exact same way that we did before by getting it just a little bit midway through the second bottom square here. That's looking good. This time we're gonna go to the red channel and instead of the blue channel. And we wanna actually lower it down a bit. And I want the mid range and the highlights to be almost matching the dimness that we did for the original RGB line. So you're gonna see me just drag it down a little bit ever so slightly here. That's looking pretty good. All right, cool. And next thing I'm gonna do is turn back on the blue channel. And I'm gonna select both the blue and the red layers and change the blending mode from normal to screen. Okay, cool. So this image now looks super, super crazy. You're gonna see these really bright highlighty parts and white parts, then also these kind of strange uh, dimming and, and solid color parts. Now the reason why this is happening is because the opacity is set all the way to 100%, but instead we wanna drop down both these layers, make sure both the blue and the red channels are selected, press T on our keyboard to open up the opacity settings. And then right next to 100%, I wanna lower this down to something like 23%. Bam, instantly we get a super dope cross-process look. Wow, yeah, this is looking really clean. If you wanna preview how the original footage looks, you can just desolo those layers and then turn them back on one by one to see just how you've added in so much more mood by changing those colors. Now let's also just take off all the soloing that we have here and check out that in combination with those VHS effects and the CC that we did earlier. And that's looking pretty good to me. But we are still not done yet because we have a few more effects to put some finishing touches on this. So the next thing that we wanna add in are some dust and specs to really distort this image up a bit. And to do that, I'm gonna create a brand new solid by right clicking in the timeline and going to new solid. I'm sure it's the same composition size and I'm gonna rename this to dust. Hit OK. To make this dust effect, we're gonna be using an effect called Fractal Noise, which is a really cool effect in After Effects. It's used for all sorts of different VFX, whether that's making zombies and their skin explode to making foggy, super cool saber light energy effects. In this case, it's gonna be making an old school vintage retro film spec and dust effect. <laughs> There's all these settings here, but you don't actually have to worry about all of them. The only two that we're gonna be mainly focusing on are the contrast and the brightness. 
So I'm gonna increase the contrast all the way up so we get this really harsh image. And then I'm gonna increase the brightness. And then I'm gonna decrease the brightness. That way we get these very subtle specks showing through here. And that looks kind of good, right? That looks like a pretty dusty, dirty image as if you just found some old photo off the ground and scanned it yourself. <laughs> Okay, so those values to me are looking like 722 for the contrast and negative 300 for the brightness. That's looking pretty good. So if we scrub through the timeline, nothing is happening and it's actually just applying it as one frame. So to make this look like it's jittering all over the place with each frame that's getting rendered on, we want to change the evolution of this fractal noise to mimic some sort of animation. And to do that, I'm going to hold down Alt on my keyboard and click on this little stopwatch icon here. And that's going to pull up the expressions options for this effect. Down here, I'm going to type in wiggle parentheses 24 comma 10,000. Yeah. And what that is going to do is Every 24 or so frames, it's going to change this value by about 10,000, which should be super, super insane. <laughs> Make it look like it's a completely different image every single time. So if I scrub through the timeline, that is exactly what's happening. All right, cool. So that's looking pretty good. Nice. Now to make this image now affect the ones below it, we want to change it from normal to screen. And that's going to take out all the blacks of the image and just leave in those whites. And bam, we get our footage with these really cool dust specks on it. If you guys want to be extra fancy and make this effect a little bit nicer, you can actually duplicate this dust layer. I'm going to actually rename it to specs. And rather than have it set to screen for the blending mode, I'm going to change it to multiply. Probably going to see the image disappear all over again. What this is going to do is now add in all those blacks to the image, but we don't want as much blacks to show up. So I'm going to change the brightness all the way in the opposite direction. So we're going up now and I'm gonna make it about 300 or 320 or so. And that's just gonna give us these little black specks as well with the image. So yeah, this is looking pretty cool right here. Yo, this is really sick. <laughs> All right, but let's keep on going. Let's go back to this distortion layer and I'm gonna add in two more effects. The first effect that I'm gonna add in is a noise effect. And I'm gonna change the amount of noise from 0% to something like 26%. Yeah, that's looking pretty grungy. And now the next effect that I'm also going to add in is a grain effect. A lot of filmmakers love adding these uh, these film style grains. So this effect is actually going to show up a little bit differently and you're going to see this white rectangle pop up. The reason for this is because by default this effect actually runs really really slow and it's kind of a huge tax on your system when you run it. So right before you actually render it out you want to change this to final output and you're going to see that white rectangle disappear and the effects getting now applied to the full image. For the most part it's a little bit difficult to see so I'm going to just turn it on and off with this effects here. But the magic of this actually happens whenever we start to scrub through and play it. But again you're going to see my, my computer slow down because this is a 4k image and yeah, this is a really, really high powered effect. So what we want to do is actually, let's just go ahead and leave it off for now. And I'm going to click on this FX. That way we get our computer running nice and fast again. Make sure though, before you render this out, you turn back on the effect. Okay, and we are almost done. We are now onto the third, the last adjustment layer for this project. And that is going to be a glow layer. So let me go ahead and rename this to glow. And then we're going to add in an eff two effects. The first effect is glow, as the name suggests. <laughs> and then the second effect is also going to be glow, but let's just worry about the first one for now. You're going to see all these different options, but for the most part, we only want to worry about the glow threshold and the glow radius. Maybe the glow intensity if things are just looking a little bit too difficult to, for us to adjust, but for the most part, you'll be fine with just those two options. Now, I'm going to change this radius from 10 to something really, really huge like 370. And instantly you're going to see that we get these really nice blooming effect on the image. Now I'm just going to go ahead and duplicate this as well. So we get a second glow, but this time I'm going to change the glow radius to something even bigger. And that number is going to be 865. So for the glow threshold though, for this one, instead of leaving it at 60%, we want to change this to 80%. And that way less of the image is getting this glow effect applied to it. I'm also going to go back to the first glow effect and I'm going to change the threshold from 60% to something like maybe like 75 or so. 
Now again, it's up to you guys to change these values depending on the footage that you're using and depending on the style that you wanna go for, whether you want this to be more bloomed out or not. Right now though, I'm thinking this is looking pretty good. We get the scan lines showing up, the whites get overexposed, and all the colors get bloomed out in the image and starting to affect it to where you can even see it with the noise effect. So yeah, this is looking really, really nice. If I even just scrub through the timeline a bit, already we're getting a lot closer to that final image. So I think that is actually it for the effect. Now, the only other thing that I did was change this hazmat suit from its really bright yellow color to match the After Effects logo that we used in the thumbnail. So to do that, I'm going to go to the OG footage and I'm going to add in an effect. It's one of my favorite effects. It's the hue and saturation effect, which you can find under color correction. And since the yellow is mostly the only color in this image, I can get away with just changing the master hue and rotating it down to something like negative 133. Ooh, that's looking super cool. But hey, if it's up to you guys and you want this to instead be whatever other color, it looks like you can just go through the whole gamut of colors by changing this wheel here. If you're finding that some other colors are not showing up how you want it to, you can actually just select down the channels so that you're only affecting a specific channel and not all the other colors in the image. So this is looking really, really cool to me. And okay, I can't decide which I like better, this orange one or this purple one. You guys let me know down in the comments. So I'm gonna go to composition, add to render queue. Then I'm gonna click on this blue text that says lossless and I wanna change it to QuickTime, format options, Apple ProRes 422LT. This is gonna be a low file size, fast render time, and easy to edit file format. And next thing, we're just gonna go ahead and click render. Now, this can take a few seconds to a few minutes or even hours, depending on how much footage you guys are color correcting. While this is rendering, that seems like the perfect time for you guys to go ahead and smash that like button <laughs> if you've stuck around this long. And hey, why not also go ahead and hit that subscribe button and make sure that that post notification bell is turned on so you don't miss out on any of the super dope videos that we got planned. Hey, while, while you're at it, why not go over to Dale Phillips' channel and go ahead and give him a good old, uh, give him, give him a good old uh, wee subscribe, eh? And, uh, <laughs> you know, a fellow YouTuber from Scotlandia. <laughs> okay, cool. So we got the render finished out. So I'm going to go ahead to this output module, click down here on the blue text again for exports, and let's just go ahead and have a wee look at this uh, finished render. Yo, this is looking really cool. Dope, so I think that looks like a really cool effect. Definitely really scary and just in time for uh, all those Halloween short films. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed that tutorial. If you guys want to get this project file and all the assets, you guys can find it on our Patreon. I hope you have fun making all sorts of super cool retro film looks with After Effects. Oh, and hey, make sure that you follow us on Instagram. DM us, we post all sorts of stuff. We ask you guys what you want to see next. Sometimes we'll even show you some behind the scenes stuff. So hey, check that out if you got a phone and you want to take us on the go with you. Anyways, thanks for watching. As always, I hope to catch you in the next one. Peace. Oh, fuck.